Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Question. We're continuing our series of video about the Chevrolet Cruze, and it's a hatchback model right now that we are sitting in, and we're going to talk about the specs and the road handling of this car. Let's start with the engine. So you've got the 1.4 liter, which is available. It's a small four-cylinder direct injection, but to give you some horsepower, you're going to have to add turbo compression. So you're going to be good for 153 horsepower at 5,600. RPM. When it comes to torque, it's not too bad on paper. It's going to be good for 177 pound-feet of torque, and that's going to be between 2,000 and 4,000 RPM. You've got two choice of transmission, either a six-speed manual M32, as they call it, or the famous Hydromatic, the 6035, which is going to be a six-speed automatic from GM. So you've got a unique manual feature on this automatic transmission. You check the position, you've got the L, usually L is for engine braking or simply going slower in some kind of way. <laughs> so you can select this gear and you're gonna be able to press the plus or the minus right there on top of the shifter. So you will be able to change gear manually, but it's gonna hold, it won't change gear for you. But believe me, this is not the good position that you need to have a manual shifter and it's not that fast to shift. So you won't have the better acceleration even if you select the manual feature on it. Talking about road handling though, road handling is interesting for this kind of car. The first thing that you have to know is that they remove some weight, about 200 pounds in general with that new version of the vehicle. When you compare it also to the engine of the last generation, they say 44 pounds in the new design. So you got around also 100 pounds less with the chassis, with the improvement that they've made to it. Acceleration are not that impressive. If you floor it, it takes some time to react because a 1.4 turbo engine, you need to spool before you get maximum power. So some websites said that acceleration from zero to 60 will only took 7.7 seconds. Wow, I'm impressed. You will see later that we have not really done that on our video. So I think you're not gonna be deceived. It's gonna be okay acceleration for passing, for, for you know getting the car to move. But still, there's some more sportier car in this segment out there. So remember that even if you shift it into manual mode, you won't do a faster acceleration. You need to get prepared before the red line to shift. And the red line is around 6,500 RPM for this engine. Let's talk about brake power. It's more impressive than the acceleration. You've got really a good brake feeling, but you've got this place of the brake pedal, which is kind of strange. It's really high when you compare it to your accelerator. So you will need to pull back your foot and press on the brake pedal as much as you can. But if you move from side to side, you're gonna hit that pedal and that might surprise you. You will need some adaptation if you start from another car and come to braking force on the cruise right now. So very well balanced, a good, a good braking power on this one, short distances, and you've got 10.8 inches disc up in front. Those are vented and you've got solid disc in the rear, 10.4 inches. The direction, well, you've got rack mounted electric power steering. Be careful when you're in those little bumps on the road, you know, you're gonna drive along and it, it's kind of light. So you will need sometimes to make some correction. Also, when you're gonna be accelerating accelerating, sometimes you will feel that torque force to the steering wheel that needs to be a little more rigid to give a better feeling. Also, you've got the suspension, which is kind of unique concession that we saw. Right now, you've got McPherson strut up in front with side-loaded module. You've got also specifically tuned coil spring, direct acting stabilizer bar, and hydraulic ride bushing, as they call it. That's with the L, LS, and LT for the rear suspension. You've got compound crank with double wallet, U-shaped profile. It's a good old torsion beam also. But with the Premier package, you will get a famous Z-Link, as they call it. So... The Premier trims add a watts linkage to the rear axle for more precise wheel control. These arrangements don't feel substantially different. And it's kind of strange because when we enter in some bump, you can find that rebound effect that I was not sure about. The front end tends to stabilize really quickly, but in the rear, you really feel that bumps. And the passenger in the rear will feel also probably the roof if you're going into a deep hole. So I'm not really inspired by this suspension right now. But once you're going to be into some turns, you're going to see that it's different. This car will hold the road, but still be careful to bumps. Let's talk about general comfort. The seats are good. 
The place in the rear are good. The visibility is good. Also, you've got the tons of equipment that come standard with the car and Red Auto, Apple CarPlay. You've got also nice item for connectivity like USB connector, 110 outlet back in the rear, and you will also get 4G LTE inside the car to give the little ones in the rear some easy access to internet. Security is always important in a car and right now they did some modification to the chassis so they made a strong body structure and you've got also high strength steel in key area that will provide enhanced crash protection for this car. You've got more standard feature than in any other compact car including Corolla and Civic right now. You've got adaptive feature like a lane keep assist, rear cross traffic alert, side blind zone alert and rear park assist. And one of the features that I really like right now is the teen driver feature that helps support safe driving habits and offer driving statistics for parents. So they will be able to see how well your teen is driving or how bad it is and make some correction before something happens to him. You've got also 10 airbags in the car, including driver and passenger knees airbag. The rear view camera is also standard on any version of the cruise. So talking about fuel consumption, well, you've got a start and stop feature that you cannot turn off. So that's kind of annoying. And sometimes it turns off, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on what climate control you have configured or even the heat outside. But still, fuel consumption with a manual version, you're going to be able to do 8.3 around town, 6.4 liter per 100 on the highway. If you go for an automatic version, the L, the LS or the LT, we're not talking about the Premier right now, you're going to be able to do 8.1 and 6.2 on the highway. But when you choose the Premier version, just like this one, you're going to be able to do 8.4 and 6.4. So numbers are a little bit higher probably because of the wheels, probably because of the tires, probably because of the aerodynamic of the car itself. Fuel capacity for a LS Auto will be 45.8 liters. And when you go for other models of the cruise, 51.9 liters. So in general, I really think the, the cruise improve itself when it comes to driving, when it comes to security, when it comes to standard feature, you will find that this car is easy to drive around. Also, they wanted to make a good price out of this really well-equipped package. And I think it's well done. With the hatchback, you've got more practicality than ever. Storage space is not a problem with this one. Reliability so far has been good over time for the cruise, but I want to know what do you think about that, guys? Do you think that a 1.4 engine is okay for you? Do you think we should add more equipment right now in the compact segment? Well, feel free to comment in this section down there below. Do a thumbs up also because you like that video and don't forget to subscribe because we have more coming about the Chevrolet Cruise and a lot of other cars out there in the Car Question channel. Take care.